Hey there! Welcome back to the Mothcast, a podcast about video games and how a couple of moths feel about them. The game for episode 26 is called Undertale, which is a game that needs no introduction, but I'm going to give it one anyway. It's a pixel graphics RPG where choices definitely matter. Today is a long one. It features myself, my brother, and my sister, and it was recorded in two separate sessions because there was so much to say. So yeah, please keep track of your skeleton fonts and let's get into the podcast. All right, so the game of the week that we played is called Undertale. Yeah, the you, very you have, infamous. You may have heard of it. <laughs> yeah, you may have heard of it. What year did it it's come not, out? Well, what was it like? You. Was it like 2017? 2015. 20, 2012? 2015. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Which the game was that was made almost single handedly by one Toby Fox. It has several thousand 10 out of 10 reviews by that every single person on the earth that's yes. ever played it. Why would we ever be reviewing? Like the best thing that happened in 2015. Probably. Uh, wh- why would we ever be re- reviewing such a game? Um, yeah. Well, the answer is uh, I've only played it once, and I don't, I, I didn't, I don't think I really played it too well. Um, I wasn't really absorbing all of the information. No, the first if you, time. You if you, it. you know, you know, you and I played it, Nicole. Uh, by the way, Nicole's here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hi. Hi. Hello. Um, Whoa. We played it together, but I didn't really. You know, I wasn't really like. I wasn't really switched on. If that makes yeah, any sense. You- you were reacting. I was reacting, I was reacting but reacting. like, like, and I remember, you know, the story beats and, and the things that happened and the information and like the gameplay. And so like going back in the second time, like it, it was definitely a different experience, but. Like you played it properly with a, with like, I guess an open mind. Yeah. Like, you know, um, whatever. I had my blind playthrough, which was with you. And then I had the, I guess like. I won't, I don't want to say like reviewers playthrough, but like a more critical ear or eye or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about Undertale though is you don't get everything on the first go. Oh no, you, you really? Don't. You don't get anything, like, everything you, on the fifth playthrough. Uh, you, like, literally, you need more than one playthrough to actually like and understand what you're looking at. There is no. Yeah. That that's not even like a um there's a few things you missed kind of thing. Yeah. There's literally a value in your game files that dictates what you like, what you get and don't get. It's yeah. called the fun value. Yeah. Like it dictates whether things show up or not. Makes sense. Game. And it's All right. random. So and it's before we get into the fun value, random. before we get into the fun value, which you can just give me examples on, um, I'll give the quick rundown on, uh, Undertale, for those that don't know, and if you don't know, that's crazy. Um, Undertale is that a weird? RPG made in uh, the most ridiculous game maker of all time. Uh, it's like this elder, like eldritch horror of a game maker. Um, it's it's um, ridiculous. Um, it's a like pixel game graphics maker studio. Yeah. Pixel graphic, heavily story based RPG game where you are a child, a human child that falls into the underground. You're trapped and you're trying to escape. Basically, as close to as no spoilers as I can get to describe this game is that sentence right there. Yep. Um, that being said, there are going to be several thousand spoilers going ahead in this episode. So if you yeah. don't like that, you uh, click off, the game, go play the game, how, come back, also, and then yeah. listen. Yeah. Go play the game. Um, yeah, so Undertale is, is an insane game. Like, like, just from top to bottom, I knew it was, but I, like, it... I think it's... You didn't know. Yeah, I didn't you know. You knew, like, but you didn't know. I think it's worth repeating, though, just because, like, this game is genuinely, like, it should be put in, like, the Hall of Fame for like, being some of, of the best game of all time. 
Yeah. Like 100% I'm pretty, genuinely. I'm pretty sure it is already. It's won some kind of award, hasn't it? I mean, it's had some nominations. Sure. I don't know if it's had any awards. Like, I know, I wouldn't have won Game of the Year. This, something. I don't know. It must have won something. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily uh, believe or care about most of these. It, it won, like, most fulfilling crowdfunded game, which is, like, okay. Like, yeah, sure, I mean, dude. <laughs> Just give that award to anybody. Who cares? Mm -hmm. um, it's, like, yeah. the cultural impact that this has have is, like, completely beyond measure. In the video gaming it sphere. It really is. Sans is in Smash Bros. Yeah. It's the, the, that's how culturally impactful it is. Smash it's, Bros. It's insane how like how big it got. How big it still is. You go on no anywhere way. on YouTube, those like any video they, basically anything. is just like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. Just be talking about Undertale, talking about like ideas in Undertale, people doing random things in Undertale, you know, um, uh, not, like don't even you started on Delta Rune. Not doing that. What's that? And not mentioning the AUs. We're not. Yeah. Well, and I was gonna say, and like, but don't worry about that. Beyond, beyond even talking about the like uh, cultural impact it had on like Tumblr <laughs> and like yeah. that whole <laughs> situation, and like. Those, you know, by all means, you, you, you enjoy yourself over there. I'm not <laughs> trying to talk anything about that because I might have a nephew who is very much in that sphere. Anyway. Um, quite possibly a sister. Yeah. Anyway. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I'm, I you do whatever you want. Like, enjoy yourself. This is, this is here for enjoyment. Um, the story of one Undertale is actually extremely simple there, there's really not yeah. there's really not a lot to this this when story you, when you when you think of the part like that it is it is pretty simple i agree um like um it starts off with i'm gonna i'm just gonna yeah no go, go for it um it starts off with like you get like a story of like an ancient like battle story. it was a battle it's a thing that happened there was really some... like it was like a, a thing war that happened basically or war between humans and monsters yeah and um, then like but humans win because uh they're just stronger yep and they lock they like seal the monsters under mount ebot mm -hmm. and uh with like a barrier to keep them in so um the monsters want to get out and they need um x amount of human souls and then, like seven or something. Yeah, it's seven. seven. Well, I, I mean, we'll we'll get to that, but essentially, it's seven yeah, to it, break the need, barrier. You can need, pass through with one of of one. both yeah, monster it, and human soul. Human souls are much more powerful than monster souls, right? Um, but then it, you see the scene with you as the player, or like this random this kid who's like walking along and like they go into a cave or something in the mountain and then they trip and fall into a hole. Yeah. And uh you and fall into the monster. That's the well, like that's, incident that's where the, you fall into the underground. That's it. Yep. That's, that's it. Hard. That's it's and extremely it. simple. Like all that stuff <laughs> that you just described doesn't even need to be brought up until like way later. Like yeah. that's all flavor for right now. The it's I just just like background basically yeah it's basically you could... to get the it, it's basically just to get the character that you play from point a to like point. a reason to be in where they are well but the like, thing is is with the storytelling they're human and uh everyone else is a monster it's like hmm but why are we having a human we... in a monster realm when there aren't any other humans around and everybody's right. looking at me like i'm crazy and a weird yeah like, that's, that's not a human that isn't a human it's like no how about this we just uh they tripped and fell into a hole yeah. um it's it's really it's really just set and dressing story-wise um it kind of puts you in the mindset of monsters and humans don't like each other and that's all you need to know 
Like that's Pretty it much. literally. Um, because once you get in it, it basically informs why every single monster you run into is like extremely suspicious of you. Right. Yeah. Or that they treat you, treat you the way that they do initially. Um, and depending like, on what, Hostile or semi-hostile. Yeah, or, and depending on uh, what playthrough you're doing, whether it's a neutral, pacifist, or genocide, you're not, you know, you're going to be treated a certain way by the monsters starting at essentially hostile. Yeah. Um, with the exception of maybe Toriel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who honestly is like, she is... Yeah, I, t so, like, I think I described it to you earlier, Tim, that, like, all of the characters in Undertale are also very simple, but they're all, like, yeah, characters I mean, of what they're supposed to represent. Yeah, yeah, they're simple, but very different from each other. Yeah, um, so, like, Toriel is, like, purity, uh, Papyrus is, is like, um, ambition. Toriel is a tutorial. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Maybe that's yeah. what what started it, but like she is she is the she's much bigger in the like grand scheme of things than just like a tutorial. Like well, Yeah, but like That's the joke. It, that's the joke on her name. Yeah, we joke know. on her name and yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. in the beginning she's a tutorial and you're I mean, like, I, oh, it's tutorial. I I understand. It's funny. Uh but yeah, I mean it's also kind of a okay name if you say it enough times. <laughs> um yeah and uh i like i i would say every character sort of represents uh maybe like an, an emotion or a feeling and it's just cranked yeah, up pretty cranked much. up or down depending on you know what situation you're in how you've been acting mm -hmm. and you know they just go from there sans is like apathy or um no, he's like, I mean, I, I wouldn't even say that he's like comedy. Not, not apathy. It's like, yeah, it's like comedy, but, you know. Well, I don't know how much that's true because in different situations, the characters go deeper than what they're originally portrayed as. Like, mm -hmm. um, Sans is very funny until you go the genocide route and he's, he's very merciless. Funny, he's right. Well, and that's why he's not and, apathy, because it um, shows that yeah, he cares yeah. a lot. And then Toriel, she seems so sweet and, and like, loving when you meet her. Until um, you try to leave. Until... Ruins. No, well, until you, um, you get the pacifist-run background of uh, her family. Mm -hmm. And you realize that yeah. how she acted in uh, the ruins and, like, trying to keep you there and trying to build a little, you know, like, her, have another, like, uh, child and take care of them and feed them. It comes straight from guilt. So yeah. it, it definitely runs a little deeper than just being one emotion, um, like, being amped up to, like, 11. Uh like when you originally meet them, sure it, it feels like that, but then you meet, get a more of the backstory. The more you play, That's and the more things you discover, you, you realize that times. oh wow, maybe these simple characters actually are like way more complex because they have these hidden oh, backstories yeah. and things that happen in them to make them the way that they are. And you're like, this goes way deeper than I thought. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like yeah, it's a it's definitely a character driven game uh, and story like altogether. So I would never, I would never try and like pigeonhole any character in, um, one uh, particular thing. I'm just, I'm using it as an example to say, uh, like the way like it, your main trait, it, basically. it, yeah, like the way it appears that the, they're like characterized on the surface is to basically take a single like part of their like the single largest aspect of them mm -hmm. and crank it up. Yeah. Um, cause like to, to like go off your Toriel example, uh, she, she, you know, she wanted to be a mother so bad, you know, 
she recorded herself while she was, you know, pregnant and like with Asgore and talking about having a, uh, uh, how happy she was and making dad jokes about and like bad puns about having, you know, a kid and being so excited about like being a mom. And yeah. then, you know, once like she could no longer protect. Yeah. Once she could no longer protect like that child and then her adopted child, uh, like basically her family exploded and, you know, it just went she downhill just from there. It. Yeah. And she had to go. She just had to go. Yep. So, yeah, it's simple whenever you see it first, and then later when you get more, when it you, when you becomes like complex. More involved, yeah, yeah. When you get more involved in the characters. Yeah. Um, to see the real them. Yeah, just so, uh, like, just to progress a little bit, uh, the, I don't know, the story, the story is, is, it's like, it's extremely interesting, but like, at the same time is like, not at all what I, what I want to gush about, which is like, completely contrary to what is normally this podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you, you talk to Papyrus, he wants to capture you, but at the same time, he really wants to be your friend, and then, yep. like, whether you do that or not, it goes through and like, you know, being friends with Papyrus is great. He's just the funniest a, goober that's ever goobered. Did you date him? Of course. I mean, I did. I did the. Okay. I did the true pastors. I did. I did, I did it all. Okay. Good. Good. good yeah. Good. Almost all. But yeah. Almost all. Um, and then you know, if you go through the genocide route, it's like the most heartbreaking thing of all time mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. Like, actually. Yeah, because he's, you because know... Because he's still... what He sees, like, this mass murderer coming, killing everybody they see, and he still wants to be friends with you. Yeah, exactly. And instead of, like, running or trying to fight. That, like... Papyrus, in particular, is, like, notable by his, like, extreme juxtaposition, basically, at all times. <laughs> Where, like, whenever you're, whenever you're trying to be at peace, he's like, no, nah, we're fighting. But like, whenever you're like a vicious murderer, he's like, "No, give me a hug." Be friends. <laughs> yeah, and then you kill him, and then it's like, it's like, oh, I thought, and then he dies. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. How can? Oh, yeah. he's like, he, I guess in this case, you could definitely say, uh, Papyrus is the embodiment of innocence. Oh, for sure. Like, like innocence. all the other characters are a little more complex. Uh, but Papyrus, he really he, is just like the embodiment of innocence. Yeah, it's like I would say the best way of putting him is like raw, innocent ambition. Yeah. 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 Because like much. he wants to be everyone's friend. He wants to be everyone's friend. He wants to friend. make sure everyone knows he's the coolest. He wants to be um, part of the Royal Guard. Yeah, he's going to be the, the, the captain of the Royal Guard one day, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. He's the best at cooking. He and is. like I his brother costume. is also just the best, just so you know. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Papyrus Bestest is brother, even if he is a little annoying with his puns. Um, side note, uh Toby Fox gets a slap on the wrist for naming the first two characters that are skeletons Papyrus and Sans. <laughs> Uh, um, and they speak in their font, which is the literally the font that they they speak in. Completely yeah. like no, no, literally nothing else to do with it. Like their names have nothing nope. to do with anything except nope. for except their font. For the font. So it's like, um, oh, <laughs> do you iconic though? Iconic. It is. Uh, to the most do hated you? font. Um, do you know the? original plan for papyrus i don't was, know uh he was going to be a character named times new roman who is a mean-spirited character who wears a fedora i mean oh yeah Doesn't that would be funny and some of or a cigarette in some of his I, uh, like um like the the drawings the early art i don't know but yeah it, the, the concept it says on the the wikipedia i um, like that would be funny if there was like several more like comedic characters, but like having that 
next to Sands, how he is now, I don't think that would have worked anywhere near as well. No way. Um, so they were both they were both um, inspired by J. N. Weedle's author of Helvetica, a webcomic series about a skeleton named after Helvetica, which is another which script. is another font. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty funny. Um, <laughs> kind of in a weird way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Papyrus would have been a, a fedora wearing mean mean guy named Times New Roman. I don't yeah, think that I like this better as well. I like this much better. Just papyrus, because... because he's like he's like because the papyrus font is like kind of like loud and obnoxious yeah pretty much and the papyrus is that well he's loud he's... and obnoxious and like and just you know i don't know he's just a goober i don't know how to he is. like he's a goober he's he's just a silly he's a silly boy he's a, he's a silly boy um and then comic sans obviously is like kind of like a laid-back font that nobody should ever read yeah, it basically sucks. <laughs> but it works because, like, it's like the funny font. Yeah, it's a funny font that doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah. Easy Hence easy. the character. Hence the character. Ta-da! Until he's, uh, until he's very completely serious. Until, until he's you very, kill very everybody serious. in the <laughs> so, underground uh, and you, you in have to fight him. In which case he's not funny anymore. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, I mean, yeah, he's still funny to the very bitter end. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Considering his final, his final super remove is what it is. I don't, I don't know if you know it, what it is. That is, a good, that is a good point. That is a good point. Um, he just uh, uh, yeah. doesn't attack. Yeah, he's like, if I never take my turn, then you never get to take your turn, and then that's it. And then you just break the game easy. And then, yeah. Pretty much. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry about um, it. Next character that I'd say is Undyne, who is <laughs> like a completely different kind of goober. I'd say probably the only character that like plays it straight the entire time until and, like the after fight. Yeah. Cause yeah, like, and then you show up on our door and she's just like, what are you doing here? You she's doing? like, I'll kill you. And, and Papyrus is like, oh, man. That's what I thought you would say, but I guess you're just not strong enough to, you know, be friends, friends. with the human. And she's and like, she's like, excuse me. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I'll you be the to best right friend to the human you've ever seen. Nobody's been friends with this human more than better me. than I. Oh, my gosh. I'm the best. Yeah. And then she lights her house on fire. And then she lights her house on fire. Well, OK, but that, you know, to be fair. Uh, you know, she's, she's just a fish cook. She's, she's you know, teaching how to cook. It's fine. You light a few houses on fire when you learn how to cook. Yeah, Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You just, you know, make another one. You'll be fine. Easy. Um, I do believe this is Tim's favorite character. It's yeah, true. Yeah, it is. Which is fine. Um, you know, we all make regrettable decisions. Okay, mine is Sans. <laughs> Most people's are Sans. Yeah, it's fine. Most people's are sans. Although I gotta say, as a second care favorite character, it's gotta be Metaton. Yeah, <sighs> Metaton. Oh. What a what a weirdo. <sighs> what a what a great <laughs> character. <clears throat> anyway, um, so uh, we'll get there. Uh, next character that you meet is obviously Alphys. Yeah. Uh, who Alphys. is just hugely neurotic and nerdy and like yeah. their entire behavior makes sense only if you do the pacifist run. Yep. Um, yeah. I didn't expect the pacifist run to be as dark as it was. I'm going to be honest with you. Right. Cause it's uh, a pacifist yeah. run. Well, Nobody no, I mean, does. I'm just saying like, like I, I knew that it was going to be something, but then I, I was like, I don't, you know, like, like, well, what is it really going to be, you know? And then, you know, you read all the stuff in the, in the true lab and you're like, oh, it's, oh, it's like, it's like basically human experimentation. Oh, human, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, monsters. like this yeah. is, it's, it's, it's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up. Um, and so like beyond that, it's, I, I don't like, the way that Alphys acts like makes complete sense just because mm -hmm. like 
anybody I mean, who's also, done that would she's also like a shut-in nerd who likes anime too so i mean yeah i mean that, that contributes you know some of us can relate. yeah i feel like the human experimentation uh, might contribute a little more yeah. yeah i think so but you know i i could be i could be like be wrong but uh, like yeah have a, a long shot of it here but I, I feel like when you do a bunch of like really you know, messed up things and regret it moral, uh, experiment. it's a goal on your brain yeah um and especially when like you know the obviously they go wrong yeah well and, and not only do they, they like they like zombies they they go wrong but also like they stick around um, yeah and they like basically are reminders yeah of what she's done and right. she's got to, like, go down there every day and feed them. And feed them. They get a little rowdy <laughs> when they're hungry. She's oh. Like... <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, I, I didn't hate Alphys, uh, but I didn't really, I didn't really care for Alphys. Um, I'm sure Alphys is somebody's favorite character. Um, Especially since in the uh, Hotland area. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she calls you every she five you minutes. Every, she oh, pings you every. Oh yeah, dates her her Twitter every few seconds. <laughs> I knew he had to put some sort of challenge in that area, but did you it didn't have think to be the challenge would be patience. You, you didn't think yeah. the <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah weird. Did it have to be patience, please? Almost <laughs> why? Almost I didn't like... think the final boss of this game would be my own patience. Patience. Um, I thought that was uh. What was that light blue? What? Yeah. I thought patience was light blue, not yellow. I don't. I don't know. You have a list. I don't know all Ew. of the. Um, You've somewhere. got to go get it. Um, I don't know all of the like the, the whatever they correspond to, yeah. like uh, you know. I figured that's what it was. Technically, I guess. I assume emotions. red is determination. Red, red is you determination. Got... Yeah. And uh, it's based on the justice. attacks they are too. Hmm. Um, in the final light, fight, like light blue slash cyan is like patience, and I don't remember what the other ones are. Uh, purple is perseverance. Yeah, mm. yeah. yellow um, is justice. But anyway, we're talking about office. any hooser. The medicine fight is next. You have to go through the core. Uh, the definitely not intimidating core that is a giant castle that has the layout that can be mismatched and changed at will um not even that it's it's just it's just a big machine yeah uh you gotta go Don't through all of metaton's nonsense um <laughs> and then once you finally confront metaton he is just like i don't know probably the greatest fight in the game if i'm honest one of them yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he's, I'm trying to think. If if we're know. if we're not considering the genocide fights, then I think he's probably the best fight in the game. Really? I think you like Metatron over the Asgore fight. Oh yeah, like far and away. I can see that. <laughs> like the Metatron <laughs> fight is basically like a puzzle, and yeah. like you yeah. get Kinda. you get good boy points for doing well. Like, I don't know yeah, why you would true. dislike uh, if this. You, if you specifically, like, if you do specific commands, like he the heel turn or something, um, like, you do the heel turn and then you don't get hit or something, you get extra points. Well, you can yeah. be like, I'm not going to get hit. And then if you don't get hit, you get a bunch of extra points. Yeah. Yeah, something I pretty much like did that. that the whole time. Um, don't get hit, forehead. Well, I mean, I did, but, it, you know, eventually I got good. Uh, also, yeah. if you eat the glam burger... Yeah, I think I bought oh, like yeah, you four just of those. Get like a thousand. Just because I was like, I have the money. Sponsorship. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just thinking back to the, the shopkeeper next to the MTT. <laughs> oh, burger pants? Burger pants. No, no, not that shopkeeper. The, oh, the, the two women. The, uh, oh, the. the oh, what are their names? The girls who like, made. Midi and, Midi and Patty or something like that. Oh, it's Caddy and Patty. Uh, Caddy, Caddy and Patty. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's 
those two are ridiculous, but also like hilarious. They are. And the note that they leave in the genocide route, uh, I watched that and I uh, like just the funniest. Like, oh my God, so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Metaton is like all of his little encounters are really interesting. I think I thought that, uh, the, especially the callback to the papyrus puzzle at the very beginning was, uh, oh, yeah, quite, quite good. <laughs> you know, that's actually solvable. Oh, yeah. I, I assume mm-hmm. considering like, uh, like there was actually a way through, probably. Yeah. It's like, just oh, that here's... if you accidentally go the wrong way, you do get stuck. Oh, I definitely got stuck. And then it and ended, and I'm like, well. Back and have to, it has to end. But I yeah. guess I'm Lemony. Oh, well. Does it change every time? Like no. they said? No, or is it, it the same? Okay. It's the same. Then I probably just got stuck in what everybody gets stuck in, because I just kind of like ran forward until I couldn't The anymore. lemon and the water, yeah. But. Um, Piranhas like lemon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, and uh, yeah, like I don't know, Metaton, Metaton, and his whole arc is just um, I don't know, it's very interesting to me because like, like clearly they they had to make this character because Alphys is supposed to just be maybe not like a background character, but just kind of um, but she didn't want to be the center of attention. Yeah, it allowed them to do their bit with the little Twitter thing, the the social media. But I think the more important thing is, like, you don't have to have Alphys in a fight. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think that's the most important bit that mm-hmm. they created Metaton. He created Metaton for. Uh, also, uh, you know, it's Metaton. Like, let's be serious. <laughs> yeah. And then their do, transformation. Do you ever go back to find out who uh, Metaton really is? What do you mean? Who Metaton oh, really um, is? The, I guess uh, not. Okay. Caddy, it's Caddy and Braddy. Um, oh. They, they, you know that key they sell? Yeah. It's uh, to a that's, house. That's to Metaton's house. Metaton's oh. house, which is over next to where um, Napsipluk house, house is. You, if you remember Napsipluk All the house, way back? All the yeah. way, all the way back. Oh wait, no. Yeah, next Naps to um... house. There's another house next to it that's pink. Okay. That's Metaton's house. Interesting. Yep. And if you, you go in there, know... it talks about uh, like there's a bunch of journals that talks about um like how Metaton wants to find the perfect body. Hmm. Because Metaton, their ghost, is a ghost. Is a ghost that checks out. Well, I mean, so, Alphys has like, been messing with like. I mean, like, weird ghost things and, well, like, the afterlife almost, right? There's a lot of, like, <laughs> yeah, but... uh, uh, um, speculation and, and theories of, like, Metaton must have, like, gone to Alphys and they, like, made a and deal. I, like, ask Alphys to make them a body? Yeah. Maybe. Basically. And so... And she's the, uh, the, you know, royal scientist. Yeah. So, well... like, Metaton willingly... There is a, a comment a somewhere. Yeah, I mean, there. Well, there is a comment somewhere that says like, uh, Metaton's like it, it's it's some throwaway character up in Hotlands. I don't remember where or who it was, but they're like, yeah, Metaton's so great. If you ask them, it's almost like making them was their idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's a weird thing to say. And then I kept yeah. going, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so. I was like, I mean, because you're like, because when you first meet them, it's like, oh yeah, the Alpha's made a, a kill bot. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it's Who, it's one of know. those things where they're like, yeah, the king Asgore, the defender of the realm, commissioned the royal scientists to make a human killing bot because we're at war. It's like, okay, that tracks. Yeah, yeah. but you know, as you go along, it it, it becomes pretty obvious that like. Metaton's yeah, not, Metaton's killing killing not really robot. that good at that. So, <laughs> nope. They just want attention. They just want to be on TV. And it especially becomes obvious whenever you do the genocide route. Um, I really, yeah, uh, Meta- yeah Metaton's not good at killing. No. I, I like. <sighs> I kind of. It's really awkward because, like, I, I totally respect 
the portion of the game where like Metaton transforms into this like oh ultimate form Neo Metaton Meta- and then Metaton dies Neo, immediately and, and then, then like everybody's horrified. I like I totally respect that story beat, but I really think that like this is the one spot in the genocide route out of all the places that is like kind of lacking in that it would have been much more compelling if Alphys did like outfit Metaton with like human killing capability. Um, I mean, that's what Metaton well, Neo was supposed to be. Well, no, is, but I mean, like, like bef- they, I don't remember, had any of them really interacted with a human? I mean, Asgore's because done there's it those many souls times. that he has. But how many of the other characters that you meet have actually met other humans? Yeah. Like, those souls may never have met no, any of those characters. No, probably not. None of them in Hotland. Undyne probably would have gotten to them first. Maybe. Yeah. Um, um I, I... Metaton, I think, is a relatively recent... Yeah, maybe. ...character that was built up. And Alphys was not the first royal scientist. Hmm. Yeah, if there you was, um, there was a royal scientist before Alphys. Interesting. I think, it's, I think it's not only just the gray NPCs, Nicole. I think there was a few that say what happened to the previous one, right? Uh, the previous royal scientist. Yeah. Um, or is it only the gray NPCs? I think the turtle guy, the shopkeeper. Oh guy, yes. He um, talked about what's his it. Name? I forget his name, but oh, turtle, the turtle shop right. keep in Waterfall. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know who you're talking about. The old guy. The only guy um, that stands up to you when you're on genocide route. Yep. Yeah, true. He's like, and he's, like, he's like, you can't hurt me. Well, me, I'm a shopkeeper. I'm a shopkeeper. Well, like, and him like, and Undyne are basically, like, the only people. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, <laughs> you can't hurt me. What are you going to do? Shop. Kill me? I'm a shopkeeper. Do it, coward. And you're like, okay. But I can't you leave. You're a shopkeeper, <laughs> and then you leave mm-hmm. angrily. Um. Well, okay. So the thing that I was gonna say with Metaton is like, uh, I think there would be a, uh, like the a sense of like, I'm saying like I'm I'm putting out a lot of bluster that I'm going to kill you, and that I want to do this. But then like as the fight goes on, like I don't really want to do this. You would get that sense like you have from Asgore in the like any of the neutral or pacifist yeah. fights in the neo metaton fight that's what i think i would have liked because it would really round out the metaton character a lot more because it's like oh you know in the pacifist version like they don't really want to do it no you know what i mean like well i i I guess i can see what you're saying is like there could have been more but i don't know i was thinking i was just thinking just now um Because in the pacifist and neutral run, whenever you you're fighting Metaton, uh, it it, it's like it's just a show. Yeah. Like there, even the the fights beforehand, it was all just show. Of course. Because even like those ones where you were kind of in danger, it was like. But not really. uh, At some point, one of them, Metaton's like hint hint nudge nudge to Alphys. Yeah. Even though she wasn't, she wasn't in on this, the like the production of this show, uh, she was still participating in her, yeah. the way that Metaton set up. Right. Uh, that you weren't actually in like in any real danger. It mm-hmm. was all just a show saying, it "Yes, was like, oh, I will yeah. kill we'll the kill human. The, kill the human. Here, and... blah blah blah." So like the For pacifist the and neutral it was still just a show, and it was also. To showcase off, like, the new body that they have. Like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, But it was still just a show. So, like, in the genocide, it kind of makes sense that they would come up and be like, I have my new actual human killing body that will actually do human killing things. And, and then it just dies body. On your side, you just, like... Stab you've already him once and walk away. You've already gained so much, like yeah, you've already gained XP. so much uh, LV that it doesn't even matter. And even then, it probably was still 
just going to be a show. Yeah. And they might have just, like, retreated anyway, but they didn't get the chance. But they didn't because you just murdered them. Because you just, just killed them and walked away. Yeah, I suppose. I, I just, I don't know. I guess that's, like, the one thing that I wish that there was, like, maybe I'm just looking for more spectacle. Um, yeah. I mean, that, but Honestly, also, like... <laughs> which is fine. The it's, thing it's is... kind of expected. The you thing is, more. is, you like... More. Well, it's not, like, I want more. I'm just saying, the like, I, I, f I genuinely felt that that, that, like part of the genocide run kind, kind of fell flat well it was like, no, what it feels oh. like to me was um it, it's like you you finish uh you finish the fight with undyne and then you go into hotland and it's like barren because mm -hmm. everybody's already like run away and then it's like you 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 show up to um metaton neo and you're like oh okay i gotta i got another fight i got another hard fight i gotta do and then you just like press the fight button and he just dies yeah it's more of like a surprise and you're because you're like you're already expecting what you're what you want said you wanted is like a, a fight where it's like oh i don't want to you know i don't want to keep doing this but then it's just not and you're surprised and it's like oh okay i that he just died that that yeah that i, I could see from like a player stance um yeah how i felt when i did it doing like actually doing the genocide yeah. was a, i kind of like immersed myself into a sort of a character uh behind it where uh, i went in knowing i was going to do genocide mm -hmm. right so i you know started the fight and uh when you do a genocide you can check on the boxes occasionally and it tells you how many are left mm -hmm. yeah. how many like people are left in to kill in each area and it's in red lettering mm -hmm. so it kind of like gets you down in the mood of like all right we gotta rip our own hearts out and become this uh essentially like demon mm -hmm. that's not like a rage demon it's just like this cold heartless thing that's right. going around killing everybody and you get through you get through papyrus and you kind of yeah, feel like, like at that point you've already ripped your like, heart out. <laughs> yeah well, well well you kind of feel feel like ah maybe there's a chance i could turn back but then you're like no i'm committed yeah you kill papyrus and it that's it like you're set like there's no going back so you continue on looking for more and more death uh as you go on um and then you get through undyne and you're like this is the most challenging thing that i have to do but i'm gonna do it and then you you kill undyne and um the fact that the kid is watching you mm -hmm. uh, monster kid he's watching you and he's horrified but you don't feel a thing Mm -hmm. you're just you're like doing it you're like this like run away if you don't want to die um and then you but so by the time you get to hotland yeah it's it's completely barren there's everybody's left everybody's they've gone. fleed so you're walking around trying to look for somebody to kill and the coldness it, and the emptiness just becomes more and more and more empty. So then you get to Metaton and the fact of the feeling of him like coming up and being all showy and you just in this like mildly annoyed slash. Yeah. It's as in like, like, get out of my out of, face. Just get out of my face. Got to get yeah. out of my way. Yeah. I guess, um, I guess if you put it like that, that's, how I viewed it, getting kind of like trying to immerse myself when mm -hmm. I did the genocide, sort of, so, and going through, um, which is the... pretty awful to think about, but that's okay. Well, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, but the thing that I'm thinking of is it could be a tool used by the creator to like push you farther along the path that you were just describing, where you're like, I am unstoppable. Is there anyone else? Like, bring out your best. 
and then you you see yeah. Metaton, and you're like, oh, so you know this is your champion, and then you take out the champion in one hit, and it's like easy, and you're like, okay, so like the rest of the game is a joke, and then yeah. like yeah. you get and to the next to, fight, and then you get to the joke. You get to the next fight, which is like Sands. literally right around the corner, and it's Sands, and you're like, oh, oh, you, you know, like. The oh. one with one health, huh? Yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, this will be fine. And it's not. And then it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you fight Sans and you think it'll be a joke because, you know, he's only got one health when you get into the battle. And you're like, oh, okay, well, uh, one health. How hard could this be? And then he, you know, bodies you. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, like, the Sans fight is on, uh, like, obviously iconic. Um and then, like, in, in the pacifist runs, the Asgore fight is actually, like, the end boss, basically. Uh, of the regular fights, base, I guess you could yeah. say. It's the only regular, regular fight that's in the neutral and pacifist run where you actually have to, like, press the fight button. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, because of how it works is you don't get any XP. It's, it is kind of like the end. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Wait, which fight? Uh, Asgore. Asgore. Oh, yeah, Asgore. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you, you, wait, he breaks it and you're like, shit. <laughs> what am I supposed oh, to do? Shit. I, I want to, like, I want to fight. I, I want to, like, you. mercy, but I can't. Can't. Yeah. He broke the whole mercy button. Oh, um,. Mercy. And then, obviously, by that time in the genocide run, it's, like, a whole mess. Um, but, I like, the ending of the genocide, I, it's, like, I, it's, it's something, but I'm much more interested in the, like, sort of meta ending of, uh, like, a neutral slash pacifist ending, which is, yeah, like... That's kind of where it really is. Mind-melting, yeah. like, oops, Photoshop broke your boss... That is like Flowey, which we haven't talked about at all. Um, oh, we haven't. Yeah, we really haven't talked about Flowey. Like Flowey is such a unique character because you're like you're like entering into the game, and he's like, "Hey, say, he, welcome he's to the underground." Literally, the first thing you see, and you're like, "Oh, it's a Flower who's talking to me. That's nice. This will be a nice game." And then, and then you he's like, "Get uh, in this world, it's kill or be killed." And then, yeah. like. And then he leaves, and, and then like, that sets the scene to, for like, like the whole to game. Kill you Sit and... there with your mouth open and your hand clutched to your pearls, yeah. and shock for a few minutes to be like, like what, "What did I just look at?" Right? Why? Why I did this did power try to kill that? me? Right. Um, and then yeah. obviously the way that uh, it all shakes out is you know, Flowey gets all the souls, becomes like Omega Flowey, and then you've got to like go through some really messed up stuff. Uh, yeah. To this, like... <laughs> anyway. It's a, fun, it's a fun battle. It's a fun it's battle. A fun, um, it's a fun battle. I'm not convinced... Um, I I'm not convinced you can die more than once. You can. Um, yeah, you can. I, well, I guess if you're bad. Times, did you, you're really bad at the game. How many times okay. did you die, Nicole? I think a couple. Because I was, like, basically standing in every attack uh, the second yeah, time was, through, and my health bar never say, changed. Um, for me, <laughs> it was, uh, I died once, but that's only because I wanted to see if you could. Yeah, that's fair. Otherwise... Well, I died once, I died once, like, easily. I but the second time, like, that was not like, the same. I, 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 I wouldn't have died in the first time, because, like... As you said, you could just stand in all the attacks, uh, attacks and it wasn't, didn't do very much. It wasn't really a big deal, yeah. Yeah, um, and I wanted to, I, I literally, like, tried to die, and I wanted to see if you could die on that fight, because it's like, oh, it's a big, big end boss, and see if you could. And you do, and then, you know, you get what you get when you, you, you die. die. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, and then I didn't die the second time. Um... So the meta, like, sort of meta ending of Flowey and how that works is, like, obviously he's breaking the fourth wall, which is, like, really interesting oh, yeah. uh, in and of itself because it's, like, a correct and, like, well-done 
fourth wall break. Yeah. Where he's like, you, like, I don't just see you behind the computer. I don't care about that. What I care about is, like, I'm going to destroy your save file. And you're like, wait, what? Why does that matter? And you're like, it matters because that means that you're going to have to go through every agony and pain all over again. again. And your friends are not going to be able to remember you. Yeah. And I'm just going to torture you for eternity. Basically is what the, is what he's saying. And it's just like, it's like within the context of the story, it's so like, oh, yeah. well done. Um, I because think. if you, if you talk, like if you do it multiple times, um, it like, he talks about, uh, I think this is in the genocide run. It's like, he talks about the fact that he's aware of saves and, uh, like, and it's like, um, he talks about it in correctly. the in the neutral run as well. Yeah, yeah. He he talks about it. He also mentions like um you as the player character, like the reason you're doing the genocide is because like you wanted to see what happened. You're so sick and twisted, you wanted to see you're just so curious you wanted to see what, what happens. Yeah. That you, uh, I, to it, I actually to looked that lineup. I'm pretty it. sure it only comes up if you've done like a neutral run before. Yeah. Or but a like, pass so, run right before that. Um, it's like you, you're just here because you're just so you're so sick and twisted and curious. You wanted to see. Yeah, you just Didn't he also call you a coward because you couldn't do it yourself. I think so. I think it's. I think he does at one point where it's like. He you know he says something like, um, "At least you're not like those people who just watch oh, videos yeah. instead of doing <laughs> it yourself." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hey, that's me, way. guys. Welcome to the club. Um, yeah, I mean, that was me first too. I, I was, watched that video. was me too before I did it because <laughs> I wanted to do it. I wanted to do the Undyne fight. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I just that like I do plan on going and doing genocide as long one as of you these don't days. Complete the game, you'll be fine. Oh yeah, he knows. You know what happens if you do fully do the genocide. Well, yeah. Right? If you sell your soul, game back up. You sell. You have to sell your soul or destroy the world. Yeah. Um, at that point, you get the soulless, etc. Yeah. Um, it's borked forever. It's borked yep. forever. I think Unless you, you uninstall. Technically, you can go in and delete the flag in the but program files, the, yeah, but it's like, the, all right. Well, once we're yeah. into like messing with program files, like what is this Doki Doki Literature Club? Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so the story I will say is complete. Um, I want to just talk very briefly about graphics. Um, as you there's said, not a lot. <laughs> huh? there's not a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said. Uh, there, there is some just, I don't think that this game would have taken off as well as it would or did if this was in like really, really trash 2015 3D graphics. And that's coming yeah, no, from somebody no who hates pixel games. Yeah. I um, think this game is like, it's, it's like bad pixel graphics, but like stylized bad pixel graphics. Yeah, it's like the level of whimsy is so like it's it's so because like elevated i don't even know if we're the, a better way to put it it's it's got like an, a huge amount of visual gags too yeah that work in and, the and guess graphics. what audio gags too uh, yeah <laughs> one of the first ones you get out of the ruins and uh sans is like Fucking, let me shake your hand and then you put out your hand and it's like it's a fart sound. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh. It's like a really okay. long one, too. <laughs> and that completely, yeah. And that completely, like, like that completely sets, sets the tone for that character for the rest of the game. Um, no, no matter which way you go. Uh, yeah. I think, I think the only thing that I wanted to say about the graphics is that it, it really wouldn't be the same game if it weren't for the absolutely wild looks on people's faces whenever you do things, whether they're good or bad, the ridiculous reactions on the world, like the, the overworld sprites and how they yeah. are like completely consistent with the, the 
like picture uh the what what would you say like the the like model the portrait. yeah the portrait models um and like how it's just the, like uh, like the fights right well in the fights or in just in conversation it's just yeah, uh, yeah. as somebody who doesn't like the little pixel graphics next- graphics mm-hmm. I think that this game would not be anywhere close to the masterpiece it is without it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, simplified, Undertale's combat system is weird. Weird? It is kind I of mean, different than... It is, uh, it, yeah, it is. I mean, I guess it is. Well, because like... It was when, we first, like, when I first played it, I guess... Well, I mean, yeah. if you've played it a bunch of times, you know, you're going to it's going to be pretty normal after that. But yeah, um, yeah. I don't I remember. Much... Go ahead. I remember um, when I first saw Tim play it because he played it like way before me. It yeah, took like me a few years to play it. When I first when it came out. <laughs> yeah, I came out. It took me like a couple of years after that to like finally be convinced playing it. But I remember seeing you play it and um, I was watching you fight uh, Asgore. Mm. Oh yeah, and I remember seeing that fight and like the battling system, and I'm just like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> that. I don't think I could do that. That's weird. What the like dodging yeah. and stuff, or yeah, yeah, like how it's just in a box, and then you Turns have to like, go around in the and box. And you played it, and then you were right. You were bad. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I was really bad. I at mean, it, but I think everyone's I had fun bad at anyway. it. Like Everyone especially in the, in the beginning, um, I uh, I I think that the easiest because like, okay, so like simplified, you're in a box and you've got a heart and you have to dodge projectiles. Basically, um, yeah. there are some modifications to this where you know in some fights, if it's blue, you stand still. If it's yellow, uh, you have to be moving. Move around. Uh, you have to. It's I guess that's a pretty consistent thing through throughout all of the fights. But if it's yellow or orange, whatever color your eyes see, uh, you have to be moving during it. But the thing no, that... No, 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 it Blue, you can move. You just, like, gravity down towards the bottom. Yellow, you don't move. Uh, you pew pew. Um, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not talking about your heart being blue. I'm talking about your like blue objects and yellow objects if they run into you if they collide with you they oh you mean specifically on the Asgore fight no on 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 pretty much all fights like even just like regular fights Um, you i want to let you know though there's don't think there's any yellow object okay they might be they might be orange orange. whatever dude you know i can't see that shit i was confused as to what what you were talking about. i was gonna get to the the different colored hearts in a minute but i was just saying like the variation is if it's blue and it hits you and you're standing still you won't take damage if it's yellow and you're or sorry orange and you're moving uh you won't you won't take, take damage. damage and if it's white yeah. just don't get hit by it <laughs> yeah that's like general rule of thumb now there are certain fights like uh going from beginning to end if your heart turns blue in the uh in the papyrus fight you're subject to gravity and so you have to like jump and it becomes oh. like a real dodging fight where it's like almost two-dimensional um yeah you only have like up and down basically you don't really have like the whole box you just have like the bottom half of the box yeah which makes it a little bit more difficult uh and then undyne doesn't really like i guess she does change what she makes you green yeah she makes you green but like it gives you a shield it changes it yeah it changes it to like a directional like defense game basically yeah, uh, you're no longer in the box well you kind of are but you don't move around it yeah your directions is you just can't move. directions you have a shield you gotta she turns you back to red right um and then after that is yellow i believe unless uh, no, you want to count purple uh purple you fight muffet purple well oh, i think yeah. technically get... okay okay I hang on technically uh i think you f- quote unquote fight 
Okay, uh, you're Metaton right. you, you do pushes Metaton glasses first. up. Technically, you fight <laughs> Metaton, <laughs> yeah, uh, Metal Crusher first. Yeah, it's uh, it's just the quiz game, but um, I think it still counts because you still get yellowed you before you get yellow purple eventually. <clears throat> um, and yellow gives you the pew pews. Yep. Um, True which it turns it into a oh, like I mean, like a shmup. It's just a shmup. A shmup. Shoot yeah, him up. shoot him up. I guess. I don't. I mean, is it really though? But you can't move. You just I'm, like. I'm thinking more well, along the lines move, of actually. like. You I'm just, thinking. You, you know, like space invaders. Yeah. Like that sort of a thing. I don't the know if that counts as a shoot 'em up. Like. I don't know, but it, it is more space invaders than it is like Galaga or something. Not Galaga. Galaga is the same thing. Uh, yeah, the, the other one. I'm thinking of a really old game that you guys are probably too young to remember that we had um, on our computer. Raptor. Raptor. No. No. You I play. Raptor, you, but I didn't play it. Raptor is like of. you play as a plane and you move around and you shoot only forward. And they've made tons of games before and after this game. Um, and you get like power ups that change your shot and like. <clears throat> Like, I'm certain you've played a game like that, but when I was young and we had the, like, Windows 98 or 97 PC that was DOS, like, that was the game that I played the most. Um, I think I'm thinking of Xavius. Maybe, yeah. That's what I'm thinking Anyway, of. it's not really, like, I don't, I don't even consider yellow to be the most, even remotely the most impactful heart color. Um mm-hmm. Because, like, you can get through basically every single fight without it. I mean, you'll take damage, but, like, you know, you understand. Yeah, but, um, like, yeah. And yeah, then purple, anyway. purple, I, I want to say it's, like, it puts you on three lines, but, like, it kind of reminds me of Frogger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, the idea is that you're, you know, stuck in a web. Yeah. He, you know, you puts you on three me. lines, and you can only jump between those three lines, and then go, you can go left and right normally. On, but on those three lines. But... Only on those three lines. Um, I don't, like, what, uh, do you have, like, a particular, I, I don't want to say, like, particular fight, but, like, particular gimmick that you like the best? Um... Mm. Or I even know, the worst, I enjoyed, maybe? <laughs> I, I don't know. I enjoyed uh, uh, Undyne's fight. Undyne's fight? Yeah. Undyne's fight is... I... I, can, I couldn't... I can never, like... Whenever we she gets to the, like, reverse arrows... Yeah, I was gonna that say that. The, <laughs> I was that gonna, one's the, the hard part. I think I lost Undyne more than any other boss. I'm gonna be honest mm, with yeah. you. Like, um, uh, And there wasn't even, like, hard mode Undyne. Like, that was just regular Undyne. Yeah. And I still got, like, my shit kicked. Uh, I mean, yeah, but my I, favorite, I think, is the papyrus when he turns you blue. Yeah, that was so like, bad. The feeling of so jumping bad. around that stuff is is so good. Well, it's so like it's so sticky, but it's so like I don't know. It's just right. Maneuverable. It's just bad enough to be good. It's does that so make sense? Satisfying. It's satisfying when you get I it. I was always so bad at the papyrus fight even when i went back and played it like after playing it two or three times and i go play it again i just had yeah. lost papyrus all three times and had to take the easy way out <laughs> wait what's the easy and way I'm like uh, oh, lose three times if we'll you just... lose three times against papyrus he just lets you go oh really yeah, yeah. that's something um, i didn't know i only lost against funny. him once um um but that's because I think I was doing something wrong. I don't remember. I will say though the uh, the Undyne fight is like basically uh, like almost um, like DDR Dance Dance Revolution, where okay. it's, it like lines up with the music. I'm so too. glad that you said this because that was going to be my next thing. This game's combat ties in with its music so perfectly on every single really fight does. for a reason because i was going to say and i don't think that this is even a stretch this game is a is a rhythm game it kind of is it's a rhythm game with like an rpg skin on is it think about you, it 
Yeah, have you like, played I don't even, genocide? Online I don't even before? think that this is a hot take. Like, yeah, but like, I was too busy like, darn, not like dying. streaming. <laughs> yeah, like to uh, <laughs> no, the genocide undying. Like, I know. It, it's Sans. literally all the beats oh, no. of her music. I'm talking is about the, every single one. Arrows. Like I know Asgore are, but... especially, Undyne especially. Every single fight though is is definitely lines up with the music. The like bombs on Metaton um in the mm -hmm. the second the second half uh, Metaton X, like it everything lines up with the music. Basically the entire time. It's all there. I never yep. noticed. Well, Guess time to go back and dying. play the game again. Play it again. But also, uh, notice. Yeah, but also pay attention whenever you're doing that. I, I noticed it um on the on the Undyne fight, actually. And uh and then like I, I was looking for it from then on. I'm like, wow, this is actually kind of insane, you know? <laughs> like yeah. why how come I don't think I've ever seen this or heard this anywhere. I've heard that the music in this game is like absolutely incredible. Um, and as Tim and I sort of talked about before the podcast, uh, I think there's a very good reason for that. Um, but like this game's combat was designed around music. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about, and if you learn other things about Toby Fox, I don't know if it's actually, I've never um, looked into anything that I was telling you about, but he, I'm, I'm convinced that he's a composer like he went to school for composing if you if you didn't know nicole uh he made the music first and then the like battle slash scene around the music that makes sense yeah and like uh i found various videos talking about how absolutely just like i don't know incredible e like all of the songs are track is yeah all of the song all of the tracks are when even like Asgore's song um Undyne's song uh Sans song like all of the song they're 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 just so meticulously crafted so much that like somebody has to know what they're doing and have to do things with intent to get them this perfect to where I don't think that any of it was an accident he crafted this game around the songs to the point where the mood in every fight is set by the the music that you're listening to, whether you know it or not. The combat is set around the music to the point where it is basically a rhythm game that you don't yeah. even realize that you're playing because it doesn't look like a rhythm game. Mm -hmm. And like, think about the way that we talked about the graphics. It they're not an afterthought, but they're as simple as somebody with no proficiency in graphics can get. Yep. You know. Like, like, think about the it's, story. It's not, it's not that complex. It's just complex mm -hmm. because there are like a few really interesting moving parts. Like you could consider these things afterthoughts and like, they're not obviously, but the thing that has like the further you look into it, the, f the more like information comes out is the yeah. music every time, every time it's just music. Mm -hmm. like it all comes down to the music in this game and yeah like half of them are just like the same tune reskinned pretty much well, well we yeah. we talked about that you said what is it the lead motif lead motif whatever dude you can mm -hmm. have your words you fancy it's, word man i think it's i think it's french or german <laughs> or something I most know. likely they they had a lot of composers over there i mean there's probably the, another reason the word bergen trekking is definitely german <laughs> <laughs> um the whatever a lot of the a lot of the simple um a lot of the simple ones are like that because i think that he wanted to he wanted to give a certain sense of sameness to a lot of the fights that were related yeah um like what were the three that you told me were similar uh, um ghost fight dummy yeah nabs to bluke and the dummy and then uh, um Spider, spider dance. Yeah, spider yeah, dance. Like, wasn't it and uh, Mad Mew Mew, if you want to con include mm, that. Mad Mew Mew. Even though it's Switch. I actually exclusive. never went and got... I never played Undertale. On yeah, Switch. I'm going to have to steal your Switch, too. You too. liar. Um, <laughs> Me? Yeah. You definitely did. No, I don't think I did. You, you have it. 
I you may, you may not have played it though. I'm pretty sure. What? You bought it on the the Switch when you first got your Switch. Oh, that actually checks out. I'm pretty sure I remember that. I don't remember. You're gonna have to go check your Nintendo account. Um, because I know I didn't buy it because then I played it on your Switch because I didn't have a Switch at that point. But it makes sense though, because um, I, which oh, means you're gonna have to steal her Switch, not mine. Yeah. I don't own it. Uh, okay. So think about it like this. I uh, first of all, I didn't necessarily agree with Spider Dance being as close as the no, puppet no, of, and the um and the Nabsoblut song. It's not close, but there are the same beats in it. Uh, well, okay, but I already like you can say yeah, that yeah. they're close, but I, I or they're the same beats, but like m- a lot of songs have the same beats. Yeah. But they don't resemble each other. No, no, no. Right? Like, there are a lot of pop songs and country songs it's, and rock songs like, that have the same um, exact chords in the same yeah. exact order. But we don't think that they're the same because of the surrounding... Because of everything else, yeah. Right, the surrounding melodies and, and things. Um, Although, um, dummy... Uh, Ghost Fight and Mad Mew Mew are, like, very well, similar. And, yeah, things. but, like, okay, so tell me where each of where, where you find all three of those. Like, uh, in, well, in the game. First off, Ghost Fight is in Ruins, mm-hmm. uh, and then Dummy and Mad Mew Mew are both in Waterfall. Okay, but you also fight the, the Dummy in Ruins. I don't know about Mad Mew Mew, but... No, you don't. Yeah, no, you, you don't. do. Fight a dummy. You fight a dummy. Yeah, you fight a dummy, but there, it's like it's normal not battle dummy. Music. It's not mad dummy. Okay, but think about it. They're related. Yeah. Right? I would argue who's probably inhabiting the dummy? Probably another ghost, right? I mean, yeah. It is. I don't know about Mad Yumu, mad, obviously. Mad dummy does tell you. But like he, he literally straight up tells you. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Like my cousin, so, he got offended that you didn't <laughs> attack him. So then he just gets mad. So then there you go. They get they have this this like sense of similarity because he wanted you to feel or think about the other thing or whenever you finally notice you go, "Oh, those two are similar because of this reason." And he does that on purpose and not necessarily because he wanted to like save time, but because it's a smart idea. Yeah. Um obviously I don't know anything about Mad Mew Mew. Maybe she's a ghost. I don't know. I um, I never played it on the Switch, the, dude. I <laughs> I don't have to tell you. I'll, I'll let you know. It's um, Alphys found a uh Mad Mew like a Mew Mew Kissy Cutie like oh I think it's like a life size doll in the trash. Oh, and then uh, I I think it's actually Mad Dummy that it takes that okay. inhabits it. So then it is related. It is. That's what, what I'm saying. So what? Like I don't, I don't understand why you guys are fighting me on this so much. What do you mean? Like you 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 encounter all the ghosts in similar areas. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Like I'm just well, I'm, I'm just first in the ruins book. and then Naps the book is. Oh no! What what I was saying was um that you fight Mad Dummy in Waterfall. But and you fight an obstacle book in um, ruins. 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 But the reason that they are related, are related is not because of the area; it's because they're both ghosts. I yes, that's correct. I mean, also, Napster book does live in Waterfall, so yeah, true, that's true. also that's true. I don't know why they were hanging out in the road, other than the they were really depressed. But well, you know, whatever. That's just a personality um, I'm pretty feature. Sure. I'm pretty sure Naps Naps says why he lives in the he like hangs out in the ruins is because I'm pretty sure there's nobody else there. Yeah, it makes sense. So how dare you himself. disturb them in the road? Anyway, um, I would nice I would Napsible. almost I would probably hazard a guess if you go into the ghost house. Naps Nasta. I can't say it so many times. It's their house. Nap. And Nap-stab look. I know. I just, you know, my mouth doesn't work. That's all. Okay, okay. Um, you go into their house and you can play some of the discs that are in there. Mm-hmm. They're probably the same or similar. Yeah. 
I, I would I, mean, I would have to go back Na- and re-listen I mean, to them. But Napstablook um, himself composed those. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Maybe uh, also, he made the music for all of his family members too. Also, Ghost House is uh, like a slowed down version of um, Spider Dance. Um. So, slash, you know, uh, what Ghost. um. I assume everyone has a favorite song, and is it Megalovania? <laughs> it's not, actually. Okay, good. Ooh. Megalovania, I feel, is a little over, like, hyped. <laughs> it's overrated. I do, I do <laughs> like Megalovania. I mean, I like it as a song. It's a yeah, good song, but, but it, my... it is a little over overrated. Been meme too hard. I mean, it's. I mean, it's not overrated. It I is, I wouldn't is, say it it's overrated, well-rated. but I understand what you're saying. You know what I mean. I'm sorry. I, it's not it overrated. Is it's well. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's been memed too hard. I mean, come on. Even the Pope likes it. <laughs> <laughs> True. What's your? Go ahead, Nicole. Uh, my favorite is Bone Trestle. I knew it. <laughs> it is a good one. Because it's also Bone Trestle's mine as well. But uh, mine's actually Spider Dance. Spider Dance. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, spider Dance is my definitely very good. Is um just something about the Spider Dance is just like get you grooving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the other ones that I really like are the core music, just the oh, being core. in the core. Oh, yeah. And then Core like is so good. I, I could listen to that for ten hours. I dude. don't know why, but I love Metaton X's freaking music. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. I love his music so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, what's it called? Um uh, F by Glamour. Yeah, yeah. F by Glamour. I don't know the names it is a of good these songs. Song. I just listen to them. I know. I know the names of the songs, so it's fine. <laughs> Tim and I, whenever I played it, we had we would because uh, uh, I put all the music on like a playlist and I would play it, and, and we would, it just would be guess like, songs. we'd guess what, what song is this? Song? Be like, oh, what I'll song is never it? Never know. Oh, uh, uh, it's, uh, this. Uh, it's this. Yeah, uh, and, the only ones I can never figure out is the Uwas. The what? Oh yeah, yeah. the Uwas. So he Uwa. Uwa so, so temperate. Uh, temperate and um. Uwa so um. What do you? What are you talking about? Oh, so holiday, Waso holiday. Yeah, uh, they're they're uh, menu musics. If you go into the like settings on like specific seasons and you mess with the like sound, you can get uh, songs based Different on the songs. season. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And those are the names. <laughs> uh, whatever. Anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> what's your least favorite song? Uh, that's not really a very good question. I'm gonna be honest, because you know they're all so good. How do you pick one that you like the least? Um, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. That is a good question. I don't know. I feel like there is one though where it's just like kind of meh. Um, I don't know if Toriel's music is very like. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know I if like it necessarily party. stands out as much. Um, this motherfucker doesn't like Hardy. <laughs> Listen, yeah. it's a bad feeling, okay? <laughs> I wonder why. I rage every single time. Um, yeah, about, I don't, uh, it's such a, I feel like it's actually such a bad question in this, like, particular instance. You know what I mean? Like, what about, like, I don't know. Some of you the, know like, what one I don't like? Songs, like Mysterious Place. I don't or... like Live Report. What? Or Death Report. Oh, you don't like the reports? No, not really. They, uh, uh, just the stress that I remember being put under while those were playing. I oh, was, yeah. I, like, I skipped those. <laughs> Wait, what do you, time. aren't those uh, the ones where you're doing the various the, tasks the for Metatons? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the news tasks. I mean, those are fine. Yeah, I mean, they're fine. I just, I know. Yeah. I skipped them. I just skipped them. Um, but yeah, no. The other thing that I was thinking about, and I was going to ask you, see if you knew any uh, theories, but in the end of the game, you fight Asgore, and he's like, 
look at the, my six souls, you're going to be the seventh, and he has, like, the empty container. You mean you, mean you like the song Long Elevator? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay oh i guess i guess the song down in the true lab is kind of it's kind of wonky um which one it's, it's kind of weird the, here we are um, here we are or, i whichever or one is Amal like gam is a little weird it's a little weird probably both here Pro- we are probably the amalgam song i'm gonna be honest i don't remember which i don't know which one is which here we are i'm pretty sure it's just the lab song um amalgam is, Why do you, you uh, pronounce it Amalgam like that? It's amalgam. And it's funny. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Amalgam. It's it funny is, to say it also, like Amalgam. It is, also, um, it is also spelled that way. But it's um, not pro- the English language. It's so I upset can right now. English, however, I want. I'm a native English speaker. <laughs> I feel like you're talking about. Uh, uh, anyway, it's probably the, uh, amalgamation. Song. Because it, it I definitely remember you amalgam- saying, I remember you saying the one, the actual True Lab song was like not bad. I'm pretty sure it's the amalgam song because I'm like that's a little weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, I know. Also, it's definitely amalgam- appropriate, like, but it's definitely also has weird. a good beat. I don't know. Um. Anyway, so the Asgore question. So yeah, he yeah. has the six souls, and obviously those are supposed to. Uh, represent various, um, like character traits. Yeah, or... like characteristics of the people that they came from, right? Yeah. Uh, so f- I have like gleaned through various things, which is why the uh, fan game I told you about is like yeah. blowing so many heads off because it got like Undertale Yellow. Yeah, Undertale Yellow because it's like following the Yellow Heart. Um, now. If you notice, uh, you get your heart turned those colors by various people. Yes. Yes. So I don't know if this is like a a fan theory or if there's somebody that thinks about this or, you know, whatever. Um, But do those like, like colors of each person, how do I want to put this? I guess the idea I had was like maybe those people stopped or ended up getting stopped by those particular people. Does that make sense? Am I saying that? Yes, I actually had the same I, thought. Okay. I, yeah, that makes sense. Like, like Sans and Papyrus with blue. Stopped the blue one, yeah. Right. Um, Even though I think isn't blue Perseverance or something? No, that's, that's no, that's purple. purple. Whatever. I don't know which I, I don't remember which one was which. I have it on a plate, but <laughs> I, never, I didn't memorize them. I had to look it up. But yeah, I don't I don't know if there's anything like confirmed out there. Uh or whatever. Oh, I I'm really honestly like I'm honestly interested in playing Undertale Yellow just because if it's supposed to be like canonized that this is like the yellow soul, like you know how it ends. Um but the trip getting there is kind of interesting, especially if, you know, you, <laughs> I guess, fall to the hands of Alphys slash Metaton. That is a, that's an interesting ending. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mainly because we talked about Metaton being like, I was like, I would really enjoy it if Metaton were actually a fight. And was, you guys were like, but like he just better. wants to, he just wants to perform. And I'm like, well. You know, I wow. I don't know. It's it's an interesting idea. What if it's before he was possessed? Mm. Mm, maybe I don't know. Mayhaps he's it actually is, I think it is a robot. prequel or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, it has to be a prequel because like yeah. Asgore already has all those souls. You know. Yeah. It's really sad because you know, considering the end, the the pacifist and neutral endings, like. <laughs> he, like he's already executed like six people uh yeah. and I'm about he's just like it's oh fine. just you know he's a cool guy. bang done it it's children okay. uh, at that it's you know i guess it's fine whatever that's not six other children potentially horrifying Mad. i mean you know you, all the items that you pick up on the way are yeah. from, oh, like the various shops and previous stuff are remnants of Previous, previous travelers. Yep. Yeah. 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 
Um, and then, of course, the uh, Omega Flowey fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with, see, they're fine. They're with, not uh, dead. The souls giving you, like, health items relating to their... Okay, but they're still dead. Like, listen, Nicole, they actually are still <laughs> dead, first of all. No, 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 their souls are still alive. They're helping you. They're helping you. Fine, it's Would fine, you no. want to live in a body or just, like, a flower? Come on, think about definitely it. Definitely not. Definitely not a soulless flower. Would you rather live in a body or a flower? Or a flower. <laughs> I would like to make a trade. One soul <laughs> for one body. Um. <laughs> yeah, the they they give you the like green items that heal you based yeah, on yeah. their, you know, colors. I I do recall this. Um I suppose so that's something. Go back to the uh, the music thing. Um, your best nightmare is a banger of a song. Classic. Which one is that? That's is... the his his music. Oh, Omega Flowey or Azrael? Yeah. No, Omega Flowey. Uh, Omega Flowey. Okay. Uh, hard, uh, because uh, his is, his first song, Azrael. whenever you first meet Flowey at the in the beginning, his music is called Your Best Friend, mm. and then uh, the end song during his battle is called your best nightmare right so that's what it is <laughs> yeah pretty much or fine looking yeah um i think that i think that the songs that really like stick are the ones that are are, oh. are the ones that you mention that are that are really worth i mean obviously like i said i the think boss ones i think almost like, every like, song well not even that because like you guys if i say like what does the Snowden music sound like? You'll be able to hear it. Oh, oh yeah. You know? It's one of my favorites. So, like, it, it's not just, you know, the boss musics. Like, obviously, Bone Trussell, everyone knows what that sounds like. You know, you listen to Megalovania, or you think about Megalovania, and you can hear that, too. It's like, all these very specific ones are the ones that you can hear, no matter what. Some of these other ones kind of fall through just because like either you aren't exposed to them enough or you listen to them like the one time because, you know, you don't have to fight Flowey every time you go through the game. Or you're like me and probably Tim, too, and puts it on your music playlist and just listen, listen to it every yeah. single time and that it comes up, uh, you know. However many years later. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but they're all good. Later. They're all good. So, I mean, I'm yeah. not faulting anybody for that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's genuinely like, I don't know. There, there, there's, there's a lot to say about every single song. And, like, I have nowhere near the expertise to say it. But as somebody who appreciates a lot of things and the complexity of a lot of these things, I can say that they're all... Like, they're all very complicated. <laughs> all these songs are very complex and very, like, good. Yeah. Both in the way that they make you feel and, like, uh, just the way that they are crafted. They're very, like, proficient, I guess is a good word. Yeah. But. All right. Well, do we have any, do you guys have anything else you want to add? Before oh, we yeah. wrap Maybe up, we're going to tell you about Gaster. Okay. Oh yeah, it, it does. It does. Um, kind of tie in, I guess, because uh, I forget what we said. What we I think it relating to True Lab. Um. Yeah, yeah, we were saying that um, it was about uh uh, uh the, Alphys wasn't the first royal. Scientist. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know if you probably didn't get. The correct fun value to see any of it but probably not um yeah gaster is the previous uh scientist uh, scientist yeah i've heard the name uh and i don't remember if it was um an actual npc or one of the gray ones that appear like with the correct fun value um but they tell you that the previous scientist and why Alphys is now the royal scientist is that Gaster fell into the core. Oh, gotcha. And uh, 
obviously Wasn't it the I turtle think. shopkeeper or like i think it yeah i think it was yeah i think, it I think was him him he told you yeah i think he yeah that might be it because he's old he's old as dirt he knows <laughs> he knows everything uh, but, but you can actually encounter Gaster. You can. You the correct fun value. As I said, with the correct fun value, which is the value of that you get randomly whenever you start the game or install the game or whatever. Right. Um, you, you get, like, a gray door and a random hallway appears in Waterfall while you're just going through it, and you see him. You, just, you see him. He, goes, he appears and disappears. Huh. Yeah, Very he strange. He appears, laughs at you, and all creepy-like, and then leaves. And you're like, Sounds oh, like some Doki Doki okay. Literature Club nonsense. Kinda, but not. Uh, now that's a game. Yeah. Gaster is the, the, the guy who I would assume either made the True Lab or, you know, because he's the one who created the core. Right. And then fell into it. Well, I mean, the core, from what I understand, is designed to be like a place where they can set traps for any humans that come in. So if he well, designed that, and it, also, it also runs the underground. Well, I mean, I guess, but if he designed it, that means that he was complicit with Asgore's plan to like trap and deal well, with yeah. any yeah. humans that fell down. But it's still, it's still basically a massive power plant. Yeah uses geothermal energy to power the underground. That just means he's a smart lad. He's a smart lad. Um, um and uh there's also theories that um Sans and Papyrus are related to him because he's hmm. a vaguely skeleton looking fellow. Interesting. Um, grab a picture and send to you uh W D Gaster. W right D Gaster, is yeah. that also a font? Maybe. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Somebody pull up the. Go to the Adobe font list. That's what he looks like. I sent it to you on. The oh score. yeah. He so does look vaguely egg. skeleton. He vaguely, it looks vaguely skeleton like. Um, skeleton. And the egg. the uh the skull like things that shoot lasers that Sans uses in the genocide fight are called gaster blasters. Yeah. Interesting. So it's like maybe um gaster was like they they are related to gave uh, related to each other some way. He gave him his powers or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But there's lots of speculation. Oh, wasn't what about the um the secret room behind uh, Sans' secret room. Forgot about that. That's Sans the one room. where... That's just his room. Oh, behind the... Yeah. Behind the... Mm -hmm. On your way... Like a picture. Are you talking about on the way to... Like in Snowden or on the way to Snowden? Behind Sans and Papyrus' house. Like no, no, it's, it's their house. It's like, um, yeah. if you do the right thing, you can get into his... Like room. behind the house and there's like a secret room. Which has like pictures, I think, of and a virus uh, and like a third person that's hmm. gone. Interesting. Oh, uh, actually, WD is a font. It's Wingding. <sighs> oh yeah, that's right, Wingdings, because that's what he talks. Beware the man who speaks. He talks in, hands. in. Yeah, he talks in. Yeah, that's another thing. The river person does tell you. The river person. Yeah, beware the man who speaks in hands. Gross. <laughs> yep. He talks in Wingdings. Talks in Wingdings. Um, yeah, that's uh, interesting. All oh, that's known. it goes. The hole goes so a, deep. He has a um, unused like his workshop, like actually like buried so deep song, uh, in the sound test room. I think Gaster's theme. Maybe he was a character that, which is like the creepy, the creepy music. Maybe um, maybe he was like a, a character that was supposed to play a part, but he got cut. Yeah, it might be. Or I don't or know. He was you know, make him play more of a part, but then decided to just not and go with something. Throw him in there just because. Yeah. 
Or then, he's crazy and he has a plan for everything. I don't know. Maybe. It's Toby Fox. You never know. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. Um, I like the game. What I do you guys think? I also say? like the game. <laughs> give it a, you know. I mean, 10 out of 10? I was going to give it a 10 out of 10. Like, yeah, I, this is I the first time so. we've given anything, but I it's, like it's, it's one of the games ever made for sure. Yeah, for sure. Nicole, 10 out of 10 for you? Um, or is it kind of, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, ah, oh, it doesn't really, uh, there's one part of it that I just don't like. I, I've got to give it a 9 out of 10. Like, oh, oh, man. You know. uh, how about a 9 point, uh, 9999? Repeating, of course. And, and, and <laughs> only because of the text, the notification updates from uh, Alphys. <laughs> Alphys. <laughs> <laughs> the third uh, you know what? You know what? That's fair. Honestly, that's, that's such a ugh, that's such a like you're so wrong for that because that was a fantastic part. I laughed multiple times. It is. Dude, okay, so you play it the first time and you're like, "Oh, I'm experiencing things." You play it for the 10th time and you're and like, it's just like oh, God, God, stop, stop stopping me." Stop, 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 I'm stop, trying stop, stop, to go. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> I don't even yeah. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't think you're supposed to play this game past like maybe 3 or 4 times. 3 times, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know, because if you play it multiple times, your fun value is different. Yeah, but like, OK, so you see things you never you haven't seen before. Like there's tons of different things like with the fun value. with the with the knowledge that there are technically 93 different endings. Um, I still don't think that you really need to play this more than three or four times. Ninety three endings. What the hell? I sent you that flow chart. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Didn't you? <laughs> Uh, you need yeah. to send that to Nicole. I did. I, I, he did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's that is a, that kind is a of worrying, large but, um, that I, I, I commend the person who created it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> because oof. 93 endings is, but it's still like, they must have done a lot of research. Like it's like 75 plus of them are all like, it's just neutral still, endings. Like, yeah, it's still neutral. Yeah. Endings. So it, it's just like whether or not you kill one person or spare them or kill the other person or spare them or like whether or not you get dog person. ending, which is like, oops, I spared very few or I, I, I spared everyone except for like very specific characters. And then, yeah. you know, Sans calls you at the end and is like, oh, so a bunch of people disappeared overnight. So we elected a dog as king. Um, things are going great. See you later. And then you end the game. That's it. That's the, that's the ending. <laughs> oh um actually can i change my uh my my rating to 9.9 .9 repeating <laughs> also uh just because of jerry jerry fuck that guy fuck that guy i don't know who jerry is <laughs> i'm let me, let me get you. you probably have met him no you met jerry you he's had to have he's, he's not like, in Snowden. he's he, in... he pretty much shows up uh every time oh fuck that guy i'm waiting yeah. Uh, I can't. I All go my homies hate Jerry. It's such a name. That's Jerry. What? That's just a regular enemy. No, that's Jerry. He's not just a regular enemy, though. What do you mean he's not just a regular enemy? He 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 doesn't show up more than once. Really? I'm pretty sure. So, like, if you're doing genocide, he could actually screw you up if you like escape from a fight. Well, I don't know. Yeah, actually. Oh, uh, all right. Do, uh, however, Jerry can be spared without aborting the genocide route. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe Literally, he but he's, he, he also screws up your genocide route also because he's got really high defense, and at that point where you mm -hmm. encounter him, it's very difficult to kill him. Uh, sounds like a skill issue. So it's like, you can just... You spare him and leave. Yeah. That's, uh... But I'm pretty sure he's a, uh... I guess I need to go and do the genocide route just to experience these things. No, no, you can experience him on any route. No, I know, but, like, I don't actually fight them unless... Oh, okay. You know what I mean? You gotta ditch Jerry and then spare the other one. Yeah. All right. I'm pretty sure Jerry can't appear. Again. I think that is that. Um... You want to tell him the next game, Tim? 
It's uh, not Zelda. <laughs> I don't know how you heard that. I'm sorry. Uh, the next game is Deltarune. Yeah, Deltarune Part One. Wow. Part One. Wow. I okay. We're so it, right? that's that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna split it because I think there's enough to talk about with uh, Part that's One true. and Part Two. Yeah, yeah. So I might have to go and, and play those just so I can refresh. Uh, that's the you idea. You'll be rejoined by Nicole. Because she's also playing. I mean, she can if she'd like. Uh, I know scheduling is difficult, so no, that, that's true. If you if you would like, but all right, I think I that is assume, that. I would assume you do. But yeah, if there's nothing yeah, else, right. I will bid everyone adieu. Thank you all so right. much for listening, and until next yep. week, goodbye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye bye.